What we're going to look at today is the very last film camera Canon ever designed. I believe it came out in 2004. It's the Canon EOS 300X. And they were still, their top of the range of their flashy camera was still in production, but they didn't change it. So this is literally the last film camera that they designed and made. Now there's been a few variations of this before. There was a 300V and there's earlier versions of this. And it's really like a consumer camera but they really went out with a blaze of glory because this thing is amazing to tell you the truth for a plasticky point and shoot type camera so i looked in the previous video at the eos 30 and there's the eos 30 33 which is their sort of amateur professional type cameras and this has literally all the features of those cameras but in this sort of horrendous it's really bad design horrendous plastic body but it's really enormously capable this thing weighs next to nothing it's got all the auto it's got 35 uh, exposure meters seven autofocus doesn't have the eye control it's got a panel on the back uh, lcd panel on the back it weighs next to nothing it's got one four thousand shutter speed but literally in that configuration with the 40 mil uh, lens you you can't go wrong I mean, it's got tons of functionality to it. These are going to be a bit more expensive these days. I mean, I've got this for like nothing, I think, nearly. Um, but now people have cottoned on to how good these cameras are, how portable they are. I mean, look at the size of it. It's tiny. It weighs absolutely nothing. You can't even tell it's in your bag. It's even got like a diopter adjuster on it. Now, I mean, most high-end film cameras you know, didn't have a diopter adjustment, but it, it's absolutely everything's built in this. And it's a really cool camera and i'm really glad i got it i mean i was doing an hour about getting this but then i bought it and it's one of those ones where if you need you know something you want to autofocus canon camera you've got access to some lenses you want to take it out for the day you don't want a massively heavy camera and you want good exposure you know all those kind of things this literally is brilliant for it however Due to its weird size, because it's tiny and it feels so uh, fragile, obviously if you put anything big on the front of it, like this perking gigantic Tokina, which is a ton of glass, it starts to look a bit ridiculous because of the size of the, you can see that, it just doesn't work. I've got a 24 to 70 mil, it's an old ingenue designed lens. And you put that in the front of it, it's ridiculous. You keep, I keep thinking the actual front will shear off. But it's not really designed. I mean, it's one of these things where you put like a nifty, uh, fifth nifty 50 on it or whatever. But I mean, it works perfectly with the 40. I mean, look at that. It's great. So anyway, we'll look at this on the table. And, and then I'll come back. Okay, so this is the uh, Canon EOS 300X. Now you can see this is the... Remember, this is their last film camera that they ever made. Everything's been, you know, it's, I think it was 2004 this came out, as I said. This is really sort of like bared down functionality, much more ergonomic. So switch on with P mode here, off button. Everything's done there. Obviously, you've got program, TV, AV, and M, very similar to the other ones. So you, you've got a command dial here and dial on the back to control the different functions. And you've got that, uh, a thing called... Uh, DEP, the DEP mode, as I explained in the previous videos, is you focus on you focus on one thing, then you refocus on another thing, and the camera then will work out the best exposure to get both objects in focus. Then over here you've got autopilot mode, all the fancy CC modes. Got another one at the bottom here. I don't know what that last one is. That's new. It's like star, but anyway, I don't shoot them. And then to control your, you've got on the back, you've got a massive power, so. If I press this button at the top, you can see it switches to timer, and that single shot, hang on, what have I got here? AI focus, that should, am I doing it too quickly? That one, hang on, off. You can only do that in P mode. So here we go, look, P, press that in, should be able to go, there we go. So that's continual, that's like multiple shots. It won't, it won't do it because I'm pointing it down. That's timer. So it's one shot, um, you know, shot after shot after shot, 
timer. Okay, so that's the top bar. You've got a very clever button here. Basically, this button here, the, the sort of one that looks like a, a snowflake. If I put the camera over there, point it, I lock exposure. It'll just lock the exposure now. Just keep it until I take the shot. So it's locked in. This button here, you've got seven focus patches in this one. So if you want to just choose one, you press that and you can tab around with the, here we go. I don't think you can see this properly. Tab around and choose which focus patch you want to be the priority one. So I've chosen the center one there. And then you've got in the back here, all the functions. So you've got a function button. Here we go. And then basically with the function button, I can, hang on a second, keep pressing it. We'll tab through all the functions. Here we go. So ISO, red eye reduction, the peeping noise. Don't know what that is. I think that's a lock of something. And then you've got um, A, B, what is it again? Auto exposure bracketing. Then you've got here, you've got your, how you set up your auto exposure bracketing. I've just come off of it. Function, hang on, function. Fu Wake it back up. Function, 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 function. So that one there is how you set up when you're doing your auto exposure bracketing, how many stops of exposure you want on each of the camera and each of the, of the pictures. See, so everything's based on here. So also we've got like exposure compensation there, which is done with, which is a bit annoying actually. Press that and then you tab the dial. Hang on, let's try to do it. That one, there you go. So you press that and you roll the dial at the top for your standard exposure compensation. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm out shot. So there you go. You standard exposure conversations like that. What else is there? Light, fires up the light on the back. See the battery's flashing one, the battery's about to go. And yeah, so it's really quite neat. It's got like its own baby diopter thing going on here. So you've got that function as well. Um, nothing much on the bottom, but you do have for such a tiny thing, you've got depth of field preview here, which wasn't on the 50E. So it's basically got everything. The 7, the, the 30 I've showed you has, uh, sh the EOS 30, which I've showed you already has, but in the, such a tiny package. This one gives you the flash. That's it. It's really, really sort of ergonomically designed. Everything's here. Really quick. Great, great little camera. Okay, so there you go. That's the Canon 300X. It, it's called the KISS 7, the KISS or something. You know, they, they have those weird designations globally as to what it was called. Fantastic little camera. I, I don't know how much you can get them for now. I think, again, there's been a lot of people who've cottoned onto these ones and they've gone up in price. But, I mean, it's the last Canon film camera and they really sort of like just... Normally they hobble features on these sort of range cameras. But I think they knew they were never making another film camera again, so they chucked as much as they could into this tiny little thing. One of the features I really do like on this, it's a weird feature, and I think, I can't remember which other camera I got that does it, my Fuji does it. When you load the film, it sort of winds it all off, first of all. So every shot you take is being wound back into the canister. So if the film door popped, every shot you've taken so far, so far you, it's in the canister. You, you only lose unexposed film. I actually really like that. So you have to get used to the fact it sort of counts down. Mind you, my Minolta 9's got that feature where you can switch from counting up to counting down the film frames. But yeah, brilliant little thing. And, it, you know, again, if, you want, if you're getting into photography, film photography, and you don't want to, because film costs a ton of money. If you want to just have great photos, uh, you know, and no stress, but take film photos, you know, I, you know, this little combination of the 40, the Pancake 40 and the uh, 300X is really, you can't go wrong. I mean, these aren't hugely expensive as well. You can get these quite cheaply. Um, but yeah, great little camera and a great way to go out for Canon. <clears throat> you know, they gave us a, a tiny package that does everything. And then they, you know, like the rest of them, fell off a cliff and dived into digital. Anyway, okay, thanks for watching.